Hey there, welcome to this video on finding holes, asymptotes, and intercepts of rational functions. Today what we're going to do, we're going to check out some rational functions, break it down, and then identify some key features um, of the rational function from its algebraic uh, setup and organization. All right, so let's go ahead and first introduce some of the topics that we're going to talk about today. One that is new for us is a hole. Now, what is a hole? Well, it's going to appear on the graph right here, and it is a hole in the graph. So what is a hole? Well, if the numerator and denominator of a rational function have a common factor, well, then a hole is created in the graph for the value of x that makes the common factor equal to 0. And we'll go ahead and look at um, an example of this, which is right below. But main, uh, mainly, I want you to identify that this point is called a discontinuity. And what a discontinuity is, is if I'm drawing this graph, it's somewhere where I have to pick up my pen. Right, so I can go ahead, I can draw this graph, drawing, 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 and boop, I have to pick up my graph to, to go over this asymptote, and asymptote is one type of discontinuity. Then I go ahead and I can draw this uh, other piece, drawing, 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 and oh, there's a hole. I have to pick up my, my pen, okay, and I have to keep going. So asymptotes and holes um, are, are two types of discontinuities, okay? And so how is, how is this done? Well, here we have an example, f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Uh, what we're going to end up doing is factoring this, and when we do factor this, you should see here that we have two factors that are the same, okay? And uh, what we want to do, right, the numerator and the denominator, is we are going to reduce them Okay, and then at this value where it, where it makes the x value equal to uh, 0, which is at 1, okay, you get a hole. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out kind of the, the steps here. So here are the steps to finding a hole in rational functions. So given the form of a function, p of x equals q of x, okay, where I have a polynomial over another polynomial. What we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to factor both the numerator and the denominator completely. It has to be completely factored. Okay, once we've done that, we can go ahead and then reduce the common factors. Okay, so I kind of want to highlight that down here in, in the steps below. So I have my function. And here's where we factor this function completely. So completely factored. And then what we do is we reduce the common factors. So here. Okay, so those cancel out. All right. So in order to find the x-coordinate of the whole, okay, let me go ahead and, and highlight this. So how do we factor the x-coordinate of the whole? Okay, there will be a hole at the x value where the common factor is equal to 0. So here's my x coordinate, okay, and where we went ahead and, and reduced here, right, x minus 1, I set that equal to 0, and I get x is equal to 1. All right, step 3, find the y coordinate of the hole. All you have to do is plug the x value um, back into the simplified function. So I have that value 1 here. Okay, all I have to go ahead and do is plug it into my function. So plug the holes x value into the simplified function. Okay, so I take that, I plug in 1 here, I go ahead and, and do some simplification, and I get 1.25. Okay, so here is the holes location, 1 comma 1.25. And we'll go ahead and look at some examples um, of that process. All right, so next what we're going to go ahead and talk about is how do we find asymptotes of rational functions. So again, given the form, okay, p of x equals, equals, sorry, f of x equals p of x over q of x, what we're going to have to do again, again, factor both the numerator and the denominator completely, okay, and then again, reduce common factors. So that step is exactly the same, and you just do that once in a given problem. 
Okay, next you'll want to go ahead and find all vertical asymptotes of a problem. So using the simplified function, you want to set factors in the denominator equal to zero and then solve for x. That will give you your vertical asymptote. All right. All right, next, find the horizontal asymptote. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is um, we're going to use the simplified form. Okay, so we're going to use our, our simplified function. And then we'll take the ratio of the first and last terms. So let me switch colors here. Okay, so take the ratio of the first terms of the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so then again, we're going to go ahead and reduce. Okay, and we're going to get a couple of different situations. If we have c over x, where c is a constant, okay, then your asymptote, your horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. If you get a constant value, then your asymptote is just that value. C. Okay, so um, kind of complicated, kind of ambiguous, but we'll go ahead and, and show you. All right. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, so step one, I'm going to go ahead and find the hole. Now, what I have to do for the hole is I have to use um, the simplified form. So I'm going to say simplify f of x or reduce all right so f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4 I'm going to go ahead and factor that so x minus 4 x plus 1 okay over x squared minus 16 well that's x minus 4 x plus 4 okay so I've gone ahead and done that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reduce so the x minus 4s, those cancel out. So now my reduced function is x plus 1 over x plus 4, okay? And sometimes I, I like to do this. I write f red of x. You, know, you don't have to, but that just tells me that that's my reduced function. All right, so now that I've, I've done that, okay, what I have to do is go ahead and I have to find the hole, okay? So the hole is going to be at x minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so I can add 4 to both sides. I get x is equal to 4. All right, so that just means that my location is at uh, 4. Okay, but now what I need to do is I need to know, okay, where is the, the y value? So I'm going to say, okay, this is kind of like part A, now part B. All right, what is f of 4? Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this 4 here and I'm going to plug it into my reduced function. So, and I always use the reduced one. So I plug in 4, okay, and that gives me 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 4, which is 5 eighths. Okay, all right, so what does that mean? Well, it means that our hole occurs at 4 comma 5 eighths. Very simple, right? Simplify, reduce, take that reduced factor, set it equal to zero, there's your hole. All right, next, let's go ahead and look at vertical asymptotes. So uh, step two for vertical asymptotes, again, I'm going to go ahead and take my, um, my denominator, okay, my factor in the denominator, so x plus 4, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. Okay, so that gives me x is equal to negative 4. Hey, there is my vertical asymptote. Very easy. Very, very easy. All right. <clears throat> uh, step three for horizontal asymptote. Okay. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take, I want to make sure I'm using the correct language, take the ratio of the first terms from the numerator and the denominator. So you can use Either case, I can use here x squared over x squared, or I can use this, x over x. It's going to give me the same answer, okay? So I'll just use x squared over x squared, OK? 
Okay, and that gives me equal to one. All right, what if I used x over x? Well, that is also one, okay? So therefore, your horizontal asymptote is y equals one. And I'll go ahead and I'll label this for you, ha, and then up here was the vertical asymptote, va. Okay, so my horizontal asymptote is y is equal to one. Pretty straightforward, right? Not too bad, not too bad. All right, let's look at uh, another example. Okay, so in this example, okay, I need to go ahead first, I need to simplify. Okay, so I have f of x is equal to x plus 5 over x times x plus 5. Just factored out a GCF of x plus 5. Okay, so what cancels? Well, the x plus 5 cancels. So that's going to be important because we're going to use that to find our whole. So now my reduced function is 1 over x. Okay, so in order to find the whole, I'm going to take x plus 5 and I set it equal to 0. Subtract 5 on each side and we get x is equal to negative 5. Okay, so there's the x value. All right, what's, what's the y value of that hole? Well, got to go ahead, right, this is part A. Now I'm going to do part B. I'm going to go ahead and take f of negative 5. Just plug in that x value. So I get 1 over negative 5. And again, remember, we're using our reduced function there. So negative 1 fifth. Hey, that was easy peasy. All right, step two, what is our vertical asymptote? Okay, so the vertical asymptote, again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my reduced function. So f reduced of x, 1 over x, and I'm going to take the denominator, x, and I set that equal to 0. I go ahead and solve. There's lots. This is very, very difficult. I'm going to solve x equals 0. Hey, x equals equal to 0. So there it is. There's your vertical asymptote. No solving there. That was nice. Okay, and then step three. Now we're going to go ahead and look for the horizontal asymptote. Ha! Right? And that is the ratio of our leading terms. So again, you can take the top, your initial x over x squared, which is 1 over x, okay, which implies y equals 0. So if you get that case, 1 over x, or just a constant, it could be a 2 in the numerator, it could be a 3, uh, that's y equals 0. If it doesn't reduce down to, uh, to a solid whole number, then you don't have, actually it doesn't even have to be a whole number, it doesn't reduce down to a constant value, then your asymptotes y equals 0. Shorebird, can I use the reduced? Yes, I'm so glad you asked. The reduced function, 1 over x, hey, I mean that's 1 over x, so that implies your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. All right, all right. Okay, so that's finding holes and that's finding asymptotes. Next, what I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna talk about how do you find zeros and how do you find intercepts of rational functions. Okay, so again, it's important that we use the simplified form of the function. Okay, and in order to find zeros or x-intercepts, okay, you let y equal 0 and solve for x. Very, very uh, easy. Because if you think about, and here's my little grid, if you think about this, okay, an x-intercept occurs here. Now, what is, for all of these points, right, I have x comma y. Okay, what's the y value for all these? It's zero right here. It's going to be some x value, and then the y value is always going to be zero. It's going to have a height. Okay, so we let y equal zero and then solve for x. Similarly, uh, if I want to find the y-intercept, I let x equal zero and then solve for y. Now, why would that be? Well, okay, think about all these points. Okay, it is... Uh, some y value, right? It has some height, but the x value is always, always zero. Okay, so let x equal zero. 
Okay, let's go ahead and apply this. So I'm going to go back to the very, very first example. Okay, so let me find a good color. We'll use purple. All right, so for step four, okay, I'm going to use my reduced function. Okay, so again, f red of x is equal to x plus 1 over x plus 4. All right, and what I need to do is I need to let y equal to 0. So I solve, or set it equal to 0, so x plus 1 over x plus 4. Okay, and I go ahead and solve. Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 4. Okay, these cancel, and we get 0 is equal to x plus 1. I'll go ahead and subtract 1 on each side, and we get x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so my 0 is at negative 1. All right, and then last but not least, let me go ahead. I'm trying to find a color that will work. <laughs> oh, the options. Let's use orange. Okay, and then step five down here is the y intercept. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to set x equal to 0. Okay, so f of x is equal to. 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 4, and that is, lo and behold, 1 fourth. Now note they want a y-intercept, and that's an ordered pair, okay? So it's got to be 0 comma 1 fourth. Simple, simple, simple. Second example, same, uh, same game. I'm going to go ahead, step 4. I'm going to set my reduced function which is 1 over x, so f of x equals 1 over x, set it equal to 0, and I get 1 over x. Okay, I'll multiply both sides by x. Whoa. Okay, these cancel, and we get this. We get 0 is equal to 1. Is that true? No, that's not true. So there's no zeros. Now, why would this make sense? And I want you to go ahead and, and look, look here. Okay, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, where is that? Well, that's on the x-axis. So am I going to have any zeros? No. Am I likely going to have any y-intercepts? Well, no, because my vertical asymptote's on my y-axis. So sometimes uh, you won't have zeros or y-intercepts. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So f of 0 is equal to 1 over 0. Hey, I can't do that. Ah! Right, when you divide by 0, the world explodes. <laughs> vertical asymptote, right? This implies a vertical asymptote, okay? So again, none. So none of those have that. All right, a lot to process. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you a couple practice problems. I want you to give these a go. Um, and then I'm going to split this video because it's, it's kind of been a lot and it's a lot to process. So I want you to pause the video, go ahead and try this example here. All right, hopefully you paused the video um, and gave these a go. So here is the solution. Your hole is at 1, because if you factor this, your x minus 1 terms cancel, and then you solve and you get an x value of x equals 1. Then you go ahead and plug that in to your reduced function, giving you an output of negative 1 half. Okay, your vertical asymptote is here, okay? It's kind of like your h value, right? x equals 3, if you solve that, all right? And then in your reduced function, notice if you take your leading terms, 1 over x, right? That implies y equals 0. Easy. 0. Your 0, if I set this equal to 0, again, I get 0 equals 1. Hey, that's not true. No 0. And then oh, my y-intercept, if I plug in 0 into my reduced function, we get negative one third. So here is your y-intercept. Again, ask yourself, is your intercept an ordered pair? Good. Okay, your zero, you just list the value. I know, it's like, why not? If it said x-intercept, you would want an ordered pair. Okay, but it says zero. So I know, math people, we're like super picky. Particular is the word. All right, here's the next example. Uh, please pause this video. Give this one a go. All right, hopefully you paused the video and tried this one. All right, so when you factor this one, 
Um, you should have had a GCF in your numerator of 3x, and then you can factor your denominator to be x minus 4 times x plus 3. You go ahead and reduce the x plus 3s, and you get 3x over x minus 4. So your whole is going to be, and yeah, your whole is going to be at negative 3. So I take my reduced factor, okay, that gives me x equals negative 3. I plug that in, and we get 9 sevenths. So there's our whole. Your vertical asymptote, you can look at your denominator. Okay, and that gives you x equals 4. Your horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to take my leading terms here. So what is 3x? And I'm going to switch colors just so it's clear. So 3x over x. Okay, and if I reduce, that gives me 3. Okay, again, you can do it up here too. Watch. What's 3x squared over x squared? Hey, x squared cancel, and we get 3. So there's your horizontal asymptote. 0, go ahead, set it equal to 0, multiply by x minus 4, and you get 0 is equal to 3x. When you divide by 3, x is equal to 0. So your 0 is at 0. And if you have a 0 at 0, isn't that like at the origin? So that's also going to be a y-intercept. Okay, that's kind of a, a quick shortcut. Otherwise, you just plug in 0. Hey, that is it for this video. I know this is a lot. Um, don't worry. Um, there's another video. I'm going to give you a couple more examples, another practice problem, and uh, we'll definitely be working on this. All right, catch you next time. Peace.